that music. Party's not a party's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minute! Hello and welcome to another week of Bat Minute Returns, the podcast where we stick things in the pantaloons of Tim Burton's 1992 Batman sequel, Batman Returns, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And I may be horrifically ill, but I am here too. It's John Parker. And here we're joined, of course, we're joined by another guest, a returning guest from season one. Uh, actually, the ask how you want to be introduced jack so you can just go and introduce yourself there if you want uh yeah hello it's jack harvey here um sometime writer sometimes artist sometimes a bit of stand-up comedy here and there um just and uh, very occasionally uh, a podcast guest uh which is the role that i will be playing today with you <laughs> your best role yet <laughs> he's a he's a quadruple threat but uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we're here to today to talk about minute fifty-eight of Batman Returns. Minute fifty-eight starts with Catwoman cracking that whip, and it ends uh, one before you whip. before you go into that, I was actually going to say I'm actually quite surprised how much is just packed into a minute on this <laughs> one because when you sent me it to watch it, I was like, "Is this a mistake here? This is like." Five minutes of action here. Surely, there's just so much going on in this bit. So it's great, isn't gotta, it? Yeah, it's just really. I'm wasting time waffling on about this. Really, we need to get to it. But, uh, but yeah, then uh, minute fifty eight ends one minute later with a Catwoman presumably preparing herself some sort of dinner, Ooh. sticking something in a microwave. Is it soup? Uh, <laughs> that would actually be incredibly appropriate if it was. I but... mean, it, it was the nineties, so there would have probably been branded merchandised soup. I would expect. <laughs> Oh, I bet I bet you they would have had them the the spaghetti shapes that you used to get. There would have definitely been Batman branded spaghetti shapes at some point. Oh yeah, I've had Batman spaghetti. So <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, like a Batman chicken noodle soup, where like the noodles are in the shape of the the bat symbol and stuff like that. And uh, I remember actually, I think we talked like way ages ago, John, about like oh the the lack of branded stuff now. But then I think that same week. I saw, like, oh, no, there's Rogue One cereal out. You can just go into Tesco and buy, like, chocolate cardboard shaped like, I don't know, Rogue One or something. <laughs> shaped like That's the, such a uh... weird movie to merchandise as well. Like, of all the Star Wars movies, Rogue One for kids cereal? <laughs> That's really strange. Does it, does it come with, like, little marshmallow effigies of uh, reanimated <laughs> Peter Cushing? Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> Oh, would be great. Like, uh, I never saw any of the to like the ads for the toys or anything, though. But I just do wonder at the end of the advert, they just have like a little toy of uh, Cassie and a little toy of Jin, just like hugging on a beach. It's just like <laughs> some kid. That, oh my god, the planet's blowing up! <laughs> that should have been the picture on the box of cereal. <laughs> the galactic oh, but... planetary scale apocalypse player set out in time for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, I would have loved that. That would have been amazing. I was a weird child. I'm a weird man. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, we do get to, speaking of people being weird, we've got these two security guards confronted by a very weird woman who whips their pistols out of the out of their hands, which is a you know the classic Catwoman move, like just showing you how deft she is with that whip. But um, well, no, we talked about one of the security guards last week. We talked about the sort of thinner guy. But I've got info on the second one, the sort of uh, you know, sort of more heavy set guy. And the I was wondering thing is, what you're going to call him because he's not fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, but, no, but, I take that back. He's a little bit, but you know, no shame. <laughs> but uh, the, the thing is, this this guy is actually like, oh, he's this guy's like a proper actor. He's in loads and loads of stuff. And then when I realized who he was, it's like, oh, of course it's that guy, because uh, this. A uh, fellow is called Bill Yeager. Uh, he's been in loads of stuff. Like he's in Girls Just Want to Have Fun. 
Uh, he's in most recently. He's been in Legion, the excellent oh. uh, X Men TV show that nobody's watching, but it's fantastic. <laughs> also, stars like Aubrey Plaza and Dan Stevens and stuff. I'm there. Uh, if he, Aubrey Plaza's in anything, I'm sold. So. I've been recommending this for you for two years, John. You're still not watching. So. I know. I mean, I'm to, busy. to be fair, to be fair, it's been on my to do list for ages, and I still haven't seen Legion. Oh. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not alone. Well, people should people should be out watching Legion. Just go support that. Oh, that's a weird thing because I think I, it did die in the ratings, but it got a third season. So I don't know. I think at least the, the networks are like, no, we're f-ing keeping this thing going. But he's also in Preacher, which I think also just got renewed there quite recently. Uh, he's in Parks and Rec, White Orle- Orland- or- Orleander, White Orleander. I'm not too White sure. That's the way. Orleander. What the hell's yeah. that? But it also stars Michelle Pfeiffer. I do remember it being like one of those. Like, I remember the poster back in the mid-2000s. It was a white poster with very heavily exposed women's faces and had, uh, I remember, yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer and Alison Lohman, who was, like, a, an actress for a bit. Was it not a prequel to The Black Dahlia? <laughs> for a minute, I thought you were being serious. I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. You know, sometimes even I don't know when I'm joking and when I'm being serious, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. It did, I did have to run it through my brain, though, like, Maybe he's right. <laughs> uh, but he's also in uh, something called Headless Body in a Topless Bar, which sounds excellent. Uh, he's in episodes of Seinfeld, Edward Scissorhands, Star Trek, The Next Generation. He's also in Repo Man, which is another thing I've been recommending to you for years, John. That you've some, <laughs> for some bizarre... You would fucking love Repo Man. I don't know why I know. you're sitting on it. I've seen uh, the trailer. I know I would like it. I just... I'm busy. You now I've got a lot going on. I'm a podcasting celebrity. <laughs> But, uh, and then, of course, the main thing, I was like, oh, of course it's that guy. It's that he played uh, Tom in the Gilmore Girls. And people were like, oh, who's Tom? Tom was the surly builder that every time, like, there was a problem at Lorelei's Inn, they'd always get in this guy, Tom, and he just sort of walked around being grumpy and stuff. But that's him. So I think when, like, Lorelai and Suki were building their new inn, Tom was the guy they kept coming to. And now I see him. It's like, oh, yeah, put the beard on him. Yeah, of course that's Tom. So I think he was even in, like, the reboot and everything. It's like, this guy, he's, he was, he's Gilmore Girls royalty this fall. I've got a confession, and that is I never understood that there was a difference between the Gilmore Girls and the Golden Girls. Yes, I, I always here. thought it was, I always thought it was the same show, and I didn't figure out there were two different things until years later. Yeah. I think that's why I never watched the Gilmore Girls. I was like, why would I want to watch a reboot of the Golden Girls? But uh, but yeah, that's that, that's who that guy is, and. Um... Of course, and like you know, and they're uh, the fence. The the other security guards is like, oh, you know, don't hurt us, lady. Our take home's less than three hundred, which I mean, I guess means less than three hundred a week. Because if it's like, less- ah, see, I had a question about that because that seems like a, a very low amount of money if it's a month. Because I did the conversion, and in today's money, that's five hundred and thirty nine dollars seventy eight cents. So if that's a month, <laughs> that's, think, though, uh, that, that would be about minimum wage though a month. But like, no. Is this not What's like uh, off the Simpsons? Is this not like the principal Skinner must be a millionaire situation? <laughs> <laughs> it is kind Completely like, forgot about that. It's a bit like. Um, no, I could have almost imagine that though, because it's a bit like that. What what is minimum wage in the minute? It is like, although yeah, I'm thinking about pounds, not dollars. Because I know in America, from again from The Simpsons, that like the unemployment over there is like three hundred dollars a week, which is crazy over here. I think over here it's like seventy five pounds or something. But like three hundred dollars yeah, a week, like over there you'd be like, well, why would you get a job? You're getting three hundred quid a week. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I, when I when I didn't have a job, I got ninety pounds every two weeks, <laughs> and and that ha- had to pay for everything. Oh which yeah, was that's insane. Right, that's right, it was every two weeks. Now it's been that long, but yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, it was, a, it was tough, tough going on the on the old doll, as they called it. I don't think they, as they yeah. called it, they still call it that. I'm just not on it anymore. Well, but I mean, security guards though, like, surely they're getting more money than you'd think. They're working nights. You, you've got to have some kind of advantage to work in nights, surely. Well, what I think is is that it's an important social message that is more relevant today than ever. Pay your workers Amazon. <laughs> yes. So yes, basically, yes, yes. Um, I don't, I don't know what the security guard situation was like back when Batman Returns was being filmed, but them could have been working for a proto Amazon. And if it's anything like what I hear, the stories coming out of Amazon are like 
maybe they weren't getting all that much. Oh, I gotta, yeah. I, I can imagine if this was made nowadays, like Shrek probably would be like Sh- Shrek deliveries or something would be a thing. It would definitely, <laughs> he would definitely yeah. have his own service. He would be over everything because he is oh, in Gotham City. He is over friggin' everything. Oh, to be fair, all we ever see is Gotham Plaza. So that's uh, maybe outside that, like, oh, no one's ever heard of Shrek. <laughs> but <laughs> I like the way as well, you know, they say, don't hurt us, lady. Because uh, I would be these guys, right? What do they care? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, w- I was watching Point Break recently to go on the on Point Break Minute. And uh, in the bank shootout near the end, I, I was thinking to myself, if I was in this position, I'd just let them take whatever they want. Well, the, I don't care. It's not my money. It's not end point break, though. I think the security guard is. He's just down on the floor with everyone else. He's like, well, yeah, that's getting robbed. Yeah. That's, that's about it. As that undercover cop. But they're not off-duty cop. <laughs> it's like, it's not, not the Keanu Reeves undercover cop. An, an additional undercover cop is there. But no, I mean, it's the same thing to me. Like, what... If I was a security guard, I know that's the point of a security guard is you protect the stuff. But at the same time, it's not my stuff. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I do want. Yeah, to. you're not. You're, you're not. You're not the bodyguard for the. You're not supposed yeah. to be throwing yourself in front of bullets to protect. You know. Yeah. Some shoes, <laughs> some microwaves, whatever. <laughs> I always see security guards as more deterrent. They're not. They're not actually going to do anything. It's to make you. Th- it's the implication that they will. But uh, I, I would. I was wondering what the. Well, what happened to these security guards now that, you know, what happens to Shrek's department store in the end? Like when Max Shrek finds out these two guys are still alive somehow. <laughs> What's it's like, he's just like, oh, come up to my top office. And then he throws them out a window as well. Or like, what, What's the deal? The guy's just like, oh, no, I'll just go through different windows every week. And if the windows are good enough, I throw the window repair guy out the window. <laughs> it's very efficient. Maybe he does it all the time. It's just like his, whenever he gets annoyed, throw someone out the window. <laughs> Um, well, maybe they quit or they lose their jobs and then immediately get hired by, um, was it Zorin from... Uh, oh, yeah, View to a Kill. Uh, James Bond, View to a Kill, yeah. Maybe they just get hired by another character played by Christopher Walken, who's equally as bloodthirsty. <laughs> oh, of course, we just, one of them obviously would go on to become a handyman in Stars Hollow <laughs> and... and Go on to have a, a great career in the Gilmore Girls. Where's the other guy? I can't remember what the other guy was yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> I think you mean the Golden Girls. Oh, of course, course yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude, like the uh, Catwoman's come back to them to that line though. It's like, oh, you're overpaid. Hit the road. Which is just like, yeah, just kick them while they're down as well. You've already emasculated them by knocking their phallic symbols out of their hands. Now you're sort of you know, them saying like, oh, look, but we're merely underpaid employees, and then go like, oh, you're overpaid. Just, just pour some salt on the wound there while you can. <laughs> I mean, I like the way, though, she, she's clearly not evil. It might I, I think this is a good demonstration of it because she scares them. She lets them go, though. She's not out to, like, burn the whole world. It could be, though, it's almost like this is a, this is a fate worse than death, that they have to live in the humiliation that they were taken down by Catwoman. Well, to be fair, someone came to you and was like, yeah, this crazy woman with a whip whip the guns out of our hands people will be like fair enough <laughs> yeah i would have walked away from that too <laughs> uh, and i do love the little uh swift little move she does here she like, they run off she goes back into doing what she's doing but she kind of wraps the whip back around herself very deftly i never noticed how cool that is before like oh yeah she's just like this is how she again up until recently didn't know she had the whip on her at all times anyway never thought about it but yeah she always has this whip but uh yeah so i just i just like that little uh little detail there that you get to see it in action yeah it's really cool i like that and she's is she holding like what the is it the handle by her back oh no it's the end of the whip which again yeah it, it's kind of poking out of her like a tail for a second <laughs> uh i do think though that's probably not the way it's it's normally prepared though because you can see the handle the whip's kind of dangling down from her neck i can imagine that if she's going about with that all the time it would be constantly jostling about and stuff so it's just like, this is the best we can do. But it usually takes like a costume person, like 10 minutes to get it wrapped properly and like stuck down. So it's not doing stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, but superhero rules is when it comes to costumes, the rules of physics don't apply. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, just, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Just whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> I support that. Whatever works. Do it. I, I, yeah, we praise Danny Elfman quite a bit in the show, but I do love the 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 music in this transition though, because it's going from the the shrill violins of the Catwoman uh, scene, and then goes into the it's maintaining that same pitch, but goes into like 
and we're going, oh, we're in the Batman theme. There he is again. And uh, just really, really love that. Just like so smoothly done. And uh, as we were saying last week, oh, there's there's... Batman coming along here. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Just have them walking around carrying this yep. damn thing everywhere. Part, part of the proud tradition, long-running tradition of Batman having to handle ridiculous oversized bombs <laughs> of varying varieties. It does look like a toy bomb, doesn't it? It doesn't look... I don't imagine a bomb actually looks anything like this. I think that my taste for the theatrical, though, if I was ever to become a mad bomber, I think I would have to use the old school alarm clock because like, I'm sure nowadays it's all yeah, done like, digitally and si- completely silent and stuff. Semtex and C4 and all that is just kind of boring and milk toast. You want to have big red dynamite sticks and a clock. <laughs> yeah. And make sure that clock is loudly ticking as well so people can hear the bomb about a mile away. <laughs> But then we uh, get a bit of cool Batman action here of him, um, you know, strutting his stuff down here. And uh, I've actually noticed this now. This is like his, seems to be his signature move in this movie. It's like a guy comes out to him, he hits him once. And then the guy kind of goes into a sort of like, Ugh! like a stunned shock almost. And then yeah. Batman does a thing. Because he did it a bunch of times, other people. He did that, that sword swallower guy in the previous week. Just punched you him know- once. Took the sword out of his mouth. That, the Doug Jones clown. Punched him yeah. once, took the thing, and then walked away. Like, that's all he seems to do is, like, yeah, I just do a one, is it st- a bat stunner or so, of some sort? He, he knows where to hit a man to make him soil himself. <laughs> see? So if you hit someone in that exact spot, they will, they will ruin their pants and uh, they'll be easy pickings. Do not try this at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no violence. Yeah. No soiling yourself. <laughs> I was like, which which is more important? <laughs> Although uh, we'd, we'd be a course remiss if we did not mention that uh, Batman then throws around, tosses this guy, and does a little f- f- uh, twirl around flourish and just walks straight on. But of course, as the guy is going, we hear a familiar sound. I'm yep. sure that most people are are, are very aware of of the yep, classic the, the fi- Wilhelm the scream. Wilhelm scream. Yep. I always find it a bit weird, the Wilhelm scream. Just like, of all the things that becomes a thing, like, why that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Is there, is, I is, don't know. I, like, I wonder if there's, like, a porn version of the Wilhelm scream, like a sound <laughs> bite, you know, from a porn that just gets, keeps getting reused. Could you imagine? <laughs> oh, my God. I hope that's true. I really, really, really hope that exists somewhere. <laughs> No, nobody's ever noticed. You do notice, like, sound effects and stock sounds being used over and over and over again because um, I was watching the um, uh, New Adventures of Superman, which are really sort of like the oldish Adventures of Superman now, where uh, Lois and Clark with Dean Cain and uh, Terry Hatcher. Yeah. And uh, occasionally they'll use this sound effect of when Superman's flying around and he sweeps past the camera of this sort of like sound. And I recognized it immediately as it was the sound effect on Magic Carpet 2 uh, oh. by Bullfrog Games that oh I my got God. with my first computer. And it was the sa- exact same sound effect as when you uh, finish the level and you shoot off through a portal and it makes the same sound. And I've seen them using it again and again and again. It's definitely been in Doctor Who a few times as well. Mm. And I'm like... Why does the Wilhelm scream have like a name that everybody knows and recognizes? But why doesn't like the shawoom sound? I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Why? Why am like I the only person that notices that one specific sound effect? That's that's the Wilhelm scream to me. If anything, this has taught me that there's demand for another magic carpet game. <laughs> that was, that was, that was just, we can start raising awareness now. Be like hashtag shawoom. There we go. And get this trend, yeah. and everyone will know shawoom by the end of the month. Listen, listen. We don't have enough time on a podcast for me to pitch my idea for a Magic Carpet three, so that'll have to wait for another day. Hey, with with VR becoming a big thing, Magic Carpet would be great. Uh, that's weird enough that you brought up like the new Adventures of Superman, because uh, just the other day, I guess it, for them it's better than like just reusing that sound effect. It's better than in Superman four them just constantly reusing the same shot of Superman flying over and over <laughs> and over again. But just the other day, they announced on Supergirl. That they're getting John Cryer, who played Lenny Luther in The Quest for Peace, is their version of Lex Luthor. Or he's playing Lex Luthor. And it's just like, 
why? Why of all the people from Superman lore are you going to John Cryer? And then I was thinking as well. I was like, yeah, because Dean Kane and Terry Hatcher and even like Helen Slater and stuff, they pop up in these other things. They're like, oh, yeah, I was in Superman one, so I'll be in. I'm playing, you know, Kara's uh, dad in, in, um, in Supergirl and stuff now. But John Shea, the guy who played Lex Luthor, he's still a working actor, doesn't seem to ever appear in these things. And he's appearing in, like, mm-hmm. Drek. So it's like it's not as if he's above, like, oh, I would never appear on a, a, a Superman-related TV show. But it seems as, I don't know, maybe he was just unpleasant to work with, or they're just like, no, no one remembers his Lex Luthor. But like, why maybe, would get maybe he wasn't acting. Maybe he was just, he was just as horrible as Lex Luthor was in real life. <laughs> but yeah, I was, felt a bit bad from those. Like, oh, well, I, would, I always enjoyed his Lex Luthor, and even though again, yeah, he was a good Lex Luthor. Yeah, always had that thing though, where like, I think eventually he had the bald head. But like, they, I think it was they waited until like maybe the last time he saw him or something. But they're like, oh yeah, he's bald now. By the way. <laughs> Like, there you go. That seems to be the new thing now with Lex Luthor. It's like, well, this this Lex Luthor, he's going to start with hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's new. <laughs> they all learned the wrong lesson from um, uh, X-Men Apocalypse, and it was like, people want stories as to how this well-known bald character <laughs> became bald. You know, why can't he just go bald like a normal person like me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But anywho... Um... <laughs> Then uh, that, that's the thing, though, because this little interaction here now is pretty cool, but it does strike me as been very stage directed. Like even the way Batman kind of, it, it almost seems as like he's walking to his mark to come to meet this guy, and it doesn't seem like organically you just come across across him. It's very much like now I walk over here and here's this man, and it just seems a bit stiff to me. He's playing a quick time event from a video game where as long as you hit the right t- X on the PlayStation controller at the right time, he performs the right takedown. And if you don't, he screws it up. And obviously, Michael Keaton hit them all at the right time. <laughs> but it's just the fact that um, it's even the guy, like, you know, this, this, you know, in case people don't know, Batman comes across a, a tattooed strongman who kind of hits him once, doesn't phase Batman at all. But then uh, Batman does strike this guy, and the way the guy's head goes back and then he comes he comes around again looks very very rehearsed. Like it looks a bit like he's like the, even the character has been like he's going to hit me, but I'm going to make it look as cool as possible. But like, and I think maybe he was like I, was, I, I wasn't even going to flinch. But the fact that he does kind of reel his head back and it goes back, oh, oh, no, no, it didn't affect me. It didn't affect me at all. It just seems very like mm. it does have a very Adam West Batman quality to it. When you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, totally. But uh, though I did look into this tattooed strongman, because I was like, well, he doesn't seem to be the best, at least in that regard, not the best actor here. But this guy actually had, again, he's had quite a career himself. Uh, this fella is uh, Rick Zumwait. Uh, tragically, he died in, in 2003 from a heart attack. In between then, though, what a career this guy had. He was in Renegade, again. <laughs> Renegade seems to keep popping up this season. He was in Fred episodes of Freddy's Nightmares. He played Barbara Bush in uh, the It's what? Gary Shandling Show, which I'm sure is deliberately <laughs> awkwardly titled by Gary Shandling. Uh, he's in something called Rage and Cajun, uh, Fatherhood with Halle Berry, of course, future Catwoman. Yeah, yes, everything's connected. Yep, yeah, and his big around. thing is that he's also in uh, a movie I've been trying to track down for ages and i can't get my hands on rockula which is like a cheesy rock musical about a cursed vampire trying to lose his virginity but it stars- this sounds amazing oh it does sound incredible but it stars thomas dolby from you know she blinded me with science that guy tony basil of like oh hey mickey fame and stuff and bo diddley I was like, I have to see this thing. I can't track it down anywhere. I can't track it down for legal purpose. I can't even find it illegally. It's just, it's just this movie doesn't exist. How can a movie that have sounds you... that good not have like a massive cult following that's keeping it alive? <laughs> Did Maybe you write just... this? Is this your fanfic? <laughs> I wish Maybe it's not. like a I... Star Wars, Star Wars holiday special situation where it was actually so bad, every single copy <laughs> has been seek, sought out and destroyed. Yes. <laughs> Try as George Lucas might. That's still could be persists. a blessing in disguise now. <laughs> uh, but then this guy's big thing, and actually his first role, 
Uh, I imagine probably a lot of people remember him from is that he took on Stallone in Over the Top. He was one of the yes. guys that he had to beat in the arm wrestling. <laughs> so, uh, I am a huge fan of that movie. Like I, I watched it with you actually, Niall. I think we watched it together the first time I saw it. And uh, I, I wanted to watch it for a joke. Like, oh, let's watch a bad movie. But it was legitimately incredible. Like, I, I immediately wanted to watch I it again. I think that was the, the, the ongoing conversation throughout the whole movie was me and you going, this seems like this isn't actually a good movie. Like, what's, I thought it was going to be a really stupid arm wrestling thing, but like this relationship with the kid and all is quite compelling. I kind of want to see what yeah, happens. I looked up the character of the tattooed strongman because I, I knew you would look up the actor. So I was like, I'll take a different approach here. Uh, so I looked up the character to see if he ever pops up again. In typical fashion, he does in the video game, in the Super Nintendo game, uh, he is the second boss, which seems very early on yeah, to me. it's because it's like nearly like, an weird. hour into the friggin' movie. So. Yeah, I suppose none of the talking scenes are going to be in a game back then. Uh, it's not like now with all the cutscenes and stuff. There's like a level where you play Max Shrek and you have to like push as many secretaries out windows as you possibly can. <laughs> and... Uh, Near the end of the second level, you can see him on the sidewalk. He's, he's reading a newspaper for some reason and tapping his foot. And uh, after Batman defeats all the enemies in the level, the strong man rips the paper in half and then jumps in to fight Batman. <laughs> so proving his villainy through literally, literally littering right before he, did, he fights Batman. Like, what an asshole. Scumbag. <laughs> Don't litter, kids, or you'll be as bad as this <laughs> strong man that's going to get beaten up by Batman. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, uh, you know, judge anyone by his appearance too. But like, he doesn't strike me as the type who would be a big newspaper reader. But then maybe I'm a bit no. unfair to the guy. I don't want to judge. Maybe he's very learned. Yeah, I don't know. It's anyone who tattoos their head, it seems a bit like, eh, that doesn't seem like a bright idea, dude. But we don't know where he got these tattoos. Yeah. Could have been like prison tattoos or anything. So, well, plus he's in the circus, so it's not like it's going to affect his. His career prospects, it's going to help them. Yeah, I guess if he had a good wig as well, this you could be like, oh, well, when I go out to my job at the bank, I put on my wig, and then when I'm out rioting, <laughs> i got the bald head. It's a, yeah, it's it's a lovely lace front. <laughs> oh. um, I thought as well when Batman punches him and there's no effect, you know, it reminded me of that awesome scene in Action Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one, John? They're all awesome scenes. <laughs> The one where he needs to he needs to get past the giant guy guarding the door and just punches him repeatedly with no effect and it becomes like a comedy bit. <laughs> so that's another recommendation for listeners: watch Action Jackson. Uh, too busy. Um, the page of my list that I'm writing them down on is nearly run out now already. We're not we're not even at the end of the minute yet. But the the scene in Action Jackson, yeah, he, he's punching this guy, no effect, no effect, no effect. So he he basically just runs at him and smashes him through the door, which I suppose Batman. That could be an approach he he takes, but no, he does not. He has a very different plan. His his punch there had another another motive to it. He wasn't just hitting him; oh, he was planting a bomb. Yeah, got a little de- little bit of bat sleight of hand action there as well. So is it, has Batman planted a lot of bombs in people's trousers before? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's he's explosive in the in the pants area. He's very. Uh, <laughs> It's just like, oh, me and Alfred practice all the time. <laughs> I'm constantly <laughs> punching him and then shoving something in his trousers. <laughs> it's a game they play. <laughs> it's like, I, we were doing it even before I became Batman. <laughs> it's just a weird pastime yet. Well, it's an interesting move for Batman as well, because I know this Batman, is qu- he's quite violent, let's say, but this is just straight up, I'm going to murder a guy. Yeah. yeah this is, whenever anybody brings up the should Batman kill people or not, this scene always seems to be at the center point of it, where it's just like, not only did he kill a bad guy, but he did it in just a really pointlessly vindictive kind of way. <laughs> he could have just knocked him out. I mean, okay, that first punch didn't do anything, but go for the head, man. Mm. But no, no. Yeah. It's, it, he's been doing that throughout this movie, though. He set that guy on fire not long back. Yeah, but that's because that's this is a definite confirmed deliberate kill. So I think when we went through the first movie... I think the only person we had were like, oh, he definitely, like, deliberately murdered was the bell goon guy who, like, he threw off the top of the bell tower. I was like, yeah, there's no way that guy was going to survive that one. And you could even argue, like, oh, the Joker, maybe he was just planning to stop him. He didn't think he was actually going to die and stuff. But, you know, you could maintain, like, oh, maybe he didn't. He was just, oh, that, that, there's loads of snow around. Maybe that guy I set in fire will be perfectly all right. 
<laughs> but this is very much like no i am not only yeah i've shoved a bomb in his pantaloons and then the fact he grins about it he's really like that's right i got you <laughs> it's like oh so yeah he's viciously murdering this guy just to go off on a bit of a tangent there um the interesting thing about the grin uh well first of all is it's a classic um michael keaton grin it's the same face oh, yeah. that he has on his face for like 95% of Beetlejuice. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the face that he pulls on uh, the founder when, as Ray Kroc, he runs up to the McDonald's brothers and he goes, franchise, franchise, franchise. And then he does that exact same grin there. Um, yes. But nobody ever really like talked about it or brought it up until sort of like the proliferation of the internet and sort of like Ornan films on dvd where you can screenshot stuff and all of a sudden it became this like massive meme of just sort of like everything that was wrong with the tim burton films because they were too goofy because you know not chris nolan would never have anything goofy in a chris nolan batman film <coughs> Bane. let the games begin but um but yeah it is kind of interesting how it's just like it just sort of became like like Nobody really noticed it until people had the top opportunity to memeify it, and then it's literally the first thing I think of now when I think of Batman Returns is just the Michael Keaton grin. That's a good point, actually, because yeah, I don't recall people really going on about his his weird facial expressions beforehand. I think you've hit the nail on the head. It, it's it's the meme culture. I think that was actually though back in the the early early days of Batman when we were just setting up like the Facebook pages and stuff. I believe not the smile. But like there was a freeze frame of him, kind of as he's as he's throwing the guy into the thing, he makes a weird kind of like sucks in his teeth kind of thing. Yeah, I think that was the profile yeah, well, picture it's, for it's, like a couple of months. It's 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 it's, 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 it's at the halfway point there of the um, the grin resetting back to a normal Batman scowl mm. when he throws him <laughs> over. So you know, it's like that's a, that's a classic point. face to me, having picked it as the profile picture it's, it's <laughs> one of the strangest things i've ever seen but well, there's two really famous screenshots of batman and the other one is this week as well <laughs> like from this movie like there's like oh there's two shots i always think of it's like one like that, yeah the, that thing we had the profile picture and then there's a shocked batman expression that always pops up that appears in minutes to come so it's like this is the most memeable week i guess but, um but yeah so that's, that's the thing though like so the guy is you know quite you know, understandably shocked. And Batman then hits him with such force that he falls into, like, it's not an open sewer, but it's like an open hole in the street, whatever is going on there. I think my concern if I was Batman would be, like, I hope there was, like, no gas pipes or anything down there, because that could have been really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Maybe, like, after a while, when he's... If, like, if Catwoman hadn't come up when Shrex blows up, if he hadn't seen Catwoman, would he be like, Oh, I hope that wasn't me. Like the, 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 that's throwing that guy down that <laughs> hole, have a chain reaction that blew up in the tire department store. I was like, oh, it's got those overpaid security guards in it anyway. So who cares about them? The rest of it was empty. <laughs> but speaking of blowing up Shrek's department store, we then cut to uh, Catwoman uh, very girlishly skipping over to the microwave section with sort of, I don't know. I, th- I was trying to see what these cans were, but I can't. I don't think there's any way you can get a shot clear enough to see. Uh, it struck me that there might be like an no. insecticide or... It, it, it's it's got to be something flammable because it's, you know, it's the classic, the classic old... Uh, teaching kids everywhere the classic old, uh, you know, insurance scam <laughs> of uh, destroying your own property uh, where you put something flammable in the microwave, you set the microwave, you release the gas and you wander off. And uh, then next thing, you just sit back and enjoy the insurance money. Mm. Uh, so I assume it's got to be something in an aerosol can that's going to be, you know, that's got some kind of flammable gas inside it of some variety. Yeah. Something combustible. It does have a, a like a blue one that I thought it looked a bit like w, uh, WD-40. But then it's like, nah, I don't know, that would be enough. But then I kind of thought like the whole flammableness of it was putting the metal in the microwave. Like that would have that done the job. But uh, I guess so maybe she's like, I don't want to take any risks. I'll just make sure that it's definitely, definitely I mean, going to blow up. Yeah. The film was obviously watched by a young Tony Stark from uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe because he does the same trick in Iron Man 3 uh, oh. when he's in, the, uh, he's in that town 
where he gets ambushed by the extremist soldiers. And doesn't he blow one of them up by doing the same thing? But he takes cover in behind like a freezer door or something like that so that he doesn't get blown <laughs> up. Very, very Indiana Jones. I, I, I really, really like Iron Man 3. I don't know, it's very, very heavily derided by a lot of the, the, the fan community. I, I, I understand their reasoning, but then at the same time, it's like, no, but don't you see, this is better, what they've done. No, it, 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 it's, the be- it's the best one. It's the best Iron Man. Hmm. I just know a lot of people were were just outraged by the 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 Mandarin twist, where they're like, "Oh, there is no well, there is no version." Of- I was exactly, I was exactly the kind of person that really wanted them to see to do like a more literal interpretation of the Mandarin. So I should have been theoretically outraged that they didn't, but I just thought the twist was so hilariously well executed. I was like. <laughs> I can't, I can't be disappointed about this. It's just, it's just too good. Yeah, I was exactly the same. I thought, oh, this is stupid for like half a second. And then I went, no, it's not. It's genius. <laughs> I, know, I was always on board. Like, oh, this is good. Because again, this is like, I didn't have a lot of attachment to the Mandarin as a character. So I was like, yep, this, this is fine. And then even at the end, though, it has Guy Pierce literally saying, well, they're going like, oh, there was never a Mandarin. He's like, I am the Mandarin. So I was like, no, wait, there is a Mandarin. It just wasn't Ben Kingsley. It was Guy Pierce the whole time. I was like, oh, I'm, I can, I can live with that. But then they did do that thing in one of the DVDs, where they had that little mini movie about Sam Rockwell been in prison, and they think, oh, no, Sam Rockwell bumps into Ben Kingsley in prison, and it turns out there actually is a Mandarin, and they allude to it, but it's never touched upon ever again. Yeah, I, I, I hope they don't because that would just be a bit of a cop out to me. I think. You know, like in the post Thanos, it, it would just negate neg- negate the sort of like surprise humor of the twist in Iron yeah, Man three. Yeah. You know, but um, I think the same thing because I think it's kind of like I thought interpreted as being a bit like the twist of um, in Batman Begins with Raj Al Ghul, where you find like, oh no, Kent Wannabe, like he was not, or Kent Wannabe, sorry, I'm not exactly sure of the pronunciation there. But as to find out, like, oh, he was—he wasn't Rajah Ghul. There was Rajah Ghul is like, he, he does exist, but it's not like he's constantly been performed by different people. It's the same kind of thing. And then it's like, oh, Liam Neeson is technically Rajah Ghul, but it's kind of like the same thing. Where it's like, well, the bad guy is there. He's just not the guy you were led to believe it is and stuff. But uh, it's just Iron Man three doesn't give you a proper like big fight with a guy literally calling himself the Mandarin until like the last second or something. So. Plus, we're going to have much more talk about Iron Man 3. I imagine we'll probably get into it when we do Batman Forever, which is a yeah. Riddler plotline is directly ripped off by Iron Man 3. But, but the thing is, because we can't get any info on what's in these cans. But then when uh, Catwoman goes and opens the whole thing, we have a ha- handily uh, labeled canister saying gas. <laughs> that one actually did take a little bit insulting because like oh, I could figure out that it was freaking gas, dude. Like I wasn't gonna be like, oh, I don't understand what she's doing here. Uh, it's again, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a sort of like a, a an Adam West era thing of just having unnecessary labels on absolutely everything. Robot overcharge, last inch of power switch, or something like that. <laughs> I also think it's not an accident that she's yet again here surrounded by these let's say outdated symbols of the woman right she's surrounded by cooking appliances like look there's toasters there's whisks there's microwaves i think that's very deliberate again because the things she's been destroying directly have been you know typically associated with women and she's destroying the patriarchy uh, so here, I think it's it's no accident that this explosion is taking place next to all this. Although having said that, it would work even better if her character had been married, a married woman driven to this, because it would add that extra layer. We <laughs> wanted like next to like the sandwich makers and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like I'll be I'll be Adam West like driving home the sort of like yes, this is these are symbols of uh, female oppression. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course. Uh, so she rips off the thing in the gas to let it leak out and shoves the stuff into the microwave, does a, you know, very careless, just sort of turns them on, not doing an exact minute or anything, just sort of, uh, just do whatever, and then skips off. And uh, yeah, that's that's the action for this minute. Uh, I thought this bomb thing here, though, well, I say bomb, she's making a bomb. 
Is that deliberately like a parallel to what Batman's just done? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's probably and that's a good uh, point, ironically, actually. she let she let the security guards go, showing mercy, whereas Batman had the strong man get blown up, not showing any mercy. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> I was like, whose side are we really supposed to be on here? Ah, uh, exactly. It makes you think. Yep. That's the thing. So Maybe. The, so we, we do know for sure that Selena definitely kills somebody at the end. But then I guess like if they had successfully got together, Bat, like Bruce Wayne and Selena would have been like, "So how many people have you killed when you were dressed up as like as a crazy person?" <laughs> like, oh, oh, Batman, I, I guess I killed about over over the years, probably about fifteen people. And she's like, oh, "I only killed that one guy." <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess that mugger too. Like I don't think it seems as if he she stabbed him in the eyes. I'm pretty sure that that was the end of him. But uh, oh, I thought she just slashed him. I don't think he was blinded and killed, was he? Uh, well, yeah, never know. Plus, we don't know that the security guards definitely got out, though. Maybe they popped in for, like, I'll get my stuff in the lockers and stuff. And, like, oh, I'll have my lunch in the break room. <laughs> she gave them the chance. But, uh, but yeah, uh, that's all I've got for this minute, though. I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to comment on what's happening on screen. No, I'm all no, tapped no, out I for think, news. I think that pretty much I've, I've got my uh, 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 non sequiturs out for today. So, you know, we can move on. <laughs> I got two more well, episodes to do, we... though, Jack. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, of be- course. before we go, though, would you like to tell our listeners? Uh, would you like to promote anything or tell them where they can find you online? You don't yeah. have to if you want to remain anonymous. <laughs> I, uh, I've, uh, I, I'm, uh, as I said earlier, I am a writer and I do do some illustrations. So I've got some uh, 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 written work out there. Um, all the information you can find on my uh, site, uh, uh, L Jack's blog, uh, comics blog dot co dot uk uh sorry no it isn't uh i always get it wrong honestly unbelievable unprofessional jack unbelievable sorry so it's l jack's comics blog uh e l at the start um and then dot blogspot dot com or co dot uk it doesn't really make any difference and that's got links to everything that i've currently got out um it's got free short stories on there as well if you're you know financially burdened at the moment and it's also got links to all my various, um, you know, uh, uh, social media things like uh, Twitter and Tumblr and all that kind of stuff, if you want to explore that further. But it's all there, and I do appreciate anybody checking out my stuff and reading my work. So if anybody does want to have a look, um, I, I encourage you to do so. Yes, we encourage you to do so also. And we would also like to encourage you to join us on Facebook at the Bat Minute Listener's Cave or on Twitter at Bat Minute. And we will see you again on Wednesday because we'll be back with minute 59 of Batman Returns. Next time, confabulation with a dapper demon. Our cowled scowler comes across the corpulent commotion creator himself as our two contenders finally convene for a scene. Gazes are exchanged, challenges are uttered aloud, but are these two parlayed laid opponents about to discover that two's company, but three's a meowed? Find out Wednesday, same bat pod, different bat minutes.